Welcome back to Guns of the Patriots. So, alright. And Sunny is on the computer. I'm guessing she's probably snacking some stuff off the net so that uh, Otacon can use. Cool toolbars, huh? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> alright, so yeah, our destination is still quite a ways. So, we have a lot to walk on on this part. Moving on. And my stress is at 4.7%. Not too bad, so far. Alright. Um, the, oh, by the way, Shiroi, that reminds me something like, uh, since we were talking about uh, Kojima's uh, commentary on AIs in this game, which is much more relevant today, you said in our MGS3 uh, finale, and I quote you, listen, Kojima does not have foresight, he's just incredibly lucky. Shiroi, at this point, we're literally three games in a row where he does this shit. Are you honestly telling me this is just luck? I mean, do give uh, her It's credit. not luck, but it's not what you said either. It's a curse. <laughs> right. And and to be fair, and sure is credit, it's not like Metal Gear Solid 4 has predicted the future yet, anyway. Like, we're not to a point where an AI is, you know, planning to dominate the world. I mean, uh, that is true, but honestly, we've been further away from that scenario, to be honest. <laughs> For now, AI, when it's not being used by companies to try and swindle their employees out of stuff, seems to be being used relatively wholesomely. Well, oh, and now she's fixing the Mark II. Go on. Go on. That's yeah, very nice. Um, it's like, yeah, so far AI seems to be being used relatively wholesomely by users. Again, some <laughs> companies have tried using it, but... Those have not exactly netted them success, thank yeah. God. Uh, I it, mean, sorry. if it does get to this point, yeah, then we can, like... Okay, it's funny. The way that looked, it looked like bullets were coming at a snake's ass. Yeah. Uh, well, well, to be fair, Dreben did mention something about the AIs uh, overtaking uh, human uh, stuff that was done by humans before. Uh, which is what people are using AI for now, and we've already talked about how there's fears about, you know, uh, companies using AIs to replace voice actors and shit like that. So, some aspects of what this game is saying are already happening. Some aspects. Not all of I them, but uh, some aspects are. Go on. I will say the funny thing, though, is that one thing Kojima didn't predict was that AI would actually be a lot more available to the public than just the high government powers using AI. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, you know what's funny, Shiro? Um, uh, because, uh, and this is the main reason why he's probably so paranoid at this point. Because think of, let's think about this for a moment, Shiro. In Death Stranding, and remember, Death Stranding came out in November 2019, just so you have a basic idea. It came out in November 2019, and it's a story about how people are isolated in their own homes because they can't get out. Um, and, uh -huh. and, and as a serious plague of sorts, because there's there's some evil c consuming the world. Now, Shiroi, uh -huh. Shiroi, do you want to remind everybody what happened in March 2020? Gee, I wonder. <laughs> so that's that, such that, a vague that, that, that's a, that's memory. A, yeah, that's the thing, Shiroi. I mean, that's that's that's, that's, that's why that's why Kojima was all like, I rewrote that shredding too because I'm I don't want to predict the future. <laughs> And honestly, just to concentrate it alone, unless we actually get invaded by, you know, eldritch Lovecraftian octopuses, you know, I'm pretty sure we should be fine. Honestly, honestly, I was, I think 2020 got to a point where people wouldn't have even been phased by Cthulhu <laughs> just coming out for a party, honestly. If anything, people would have seen it as a mercy at that point. Kojima must be must have been banging his head against the wall. Why? Stop that! Stop doing okay, that! Okay. <laughs> hey, please stop. When it comes to writing, who mostly predicted roughly the geopolitical state of the future. Again, the big three are sorry, MGS uh, in general. Let's not just say two in general. Deus Ex uh, is one of the other big ones, particularly just the first title. Not necessarily Invisible War. Um, 
and uh, in part, uh, as we noticed, also the uh, the portion of the gears uh, you know, with the civilization set that represents a bit more our modern times. So. <laughs> I honestly thought you were going to mention Ace Attorney, which has surprisingly uh, lately that, actually been getting some stuff. Maybe, right. but in some, I can tell you that in a lot of countries, the the law system is not the same as that. In that, uh, that is true. Games, I think, so far. Like, However, I, I told you, like. For as dystopic as it is, I can tell you, it probably would improve things in my country if it was adopted for a change. Mm -hmm. That is true, true as that may be, though. You don't even though. know how it works, Jova. <laughs> that, I, well, hence why I said true as that may be. Like, it's not sure. a certainty, since I don't know, but... You gotta admit, it is uncanny the stuff that Ace Attorney has been proving right, even in the political scheme. But even some of the wackier stuff, like a lawyer actually throwing a cup of coffee at another lawyer during a court session, while one of the people involved in that case was legit named Phoenix. <laughs> or a parent actually being used to nail a murderer in a court case. Nothing to see here, just a, yes, just, a, just a snake crawling through the ground. Obviously, Jova, it's, it's more likely when you think that weird coincidences like these keeps happening. There is essentially, I forgot exactly when it happened, essentially a plain incident that has all of its elements, like the people involved, the places near event, that nearly mirrors the initial accident in The Dark Knight Rises. No, mm -hmm. I'm not even joking. You also notice... You know, it's some... Uh, so what we're witnessing is the event wherein reality mirrors fiction. Alright, for the sake of Shira, since she can see that shit. Uh, as, uh, basically, Shira, the more, the closer we get to the explosions and the various soldiers and everything, like, the more violence there's there around the player, the more the stress, um, increases. So the, the stress is constantly reacting to what's going on in the game. There we go. Now, now they can see you more with your stained in blood. Yeah, and you'll notice that uh, my stress is, of course, raise, rising ac uh, accordingly for, to that. Um, yeah, being shot tends to uh, affect your stress levels. Mm -hmm. I'm just going out on a limb. Jova, you, you have to be like the soldiers of Rohan at the end of uh, the Rabashki version of Lord of the Rings, uh, full, of, full of arrows, and yet just chilling out on top of Elm's Leap. <laughs> so let's ask Chris for some advice on the stress while we're at it. Hey, Rose, how can I resist being stressed by a bullet shooting me? Right. You're keeping your psych up better than I expected. Maybe you were right about not needing my help. I got bigger things to worry about here. Like for example, what are you wearing? Equals high stress. So the best way to replenish your psych gauge is to relieve your stress. It looks like she's wearing a rug carpet. It's more like the pattern that confuses me. Hey, character suddenly changing clothes during a game was my idea, damn it. Hey, 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 now. She's gotta dress up fashionably. <laughs> Besides, maybe the outfits are her way of relaxing also, Snake of as part of their therapy sessions. But yeah, the basic gist of it is that uh, be sure to find a place to lay low, rest, make sure not to be in extreme heat or extreme cold, and... Want to, if, if, to only read the, if you want to gently calm down, the floor is your friend. Basically. Snake, it's just a little farther to the lab. Yeah, so we're almost there. Now and get yourself caught. <laughs> That's good. By the way, could you put Sunny to bed? Uh, well, actually, she is in her bed. Actually, there you go. she's not. She's not <laughs> sleeping, but <laughs> she is well, she... all right. Bed. One thing that I will she also needs her rest. one thing that I might as well also bring up since I haven't brought it up yet is, of course, the technical aspects of the game. Because since the game was made uniquely and exclusive for the PlayStation Three, the developers were able to take full advantage of the hardware. Uh, to because no matter how much. Uh, war stuff like explosions and stuff that is on screen the game manages to even in original hardware manages to keep a really good consistent 30 um so it uh so and combined with the fact that uh, remember at the time this was 2008 at the time this was yeah. probably the most graphically impressive game yeah because remember Final Fantasy 13 had yet to come out at this point that, that game only came out two years after this one so before Final Fantasy XIV came out, this was, at the time, the big showcase for what the PS3 could do. And as a general rule of thought, um, games on the PS3, especially in the early years, could have a tendency to chug a lot, even if they had a cap at 30. You know? mm -hmm. The only other game that I can think of released in the early years, other than this, that managed to stay consistent for the most part, was the Resistance, uh, the first Resistance game. 
Mm -hmm. Even then, I don't even know what kind of dark magic Insomnia killed. Well, I can tell, tell you that Naughty Dog did that too, because the first Uncharted came out a year before this, and that game also ran at a perfectly smooth 30, even on the PS3. So, mm -hmm. there is that. Like, uh, well, it, it, it mostly helps too for the Sony studios, because they only have to worry about this platform. Because Unfortunately, the... I remember Infamous shocking, but that one tried to be... Yeah, it's an open world. Like, like so... GTA, so it's understandable. Yeah, that, that's much more understandable. Whereas this, both this and Uncharted are more linear in nature, so they're easier yeah. to... Again, resistance. Uh, Russia Twin Tank uh, tools of destruction is a bit different because we do the trick of lowering the resolution to 480 to, keep, to get a... Six, Dynamic get a resolution. Right. To 60 FPS. Okay. So, so there is that. Um, yeah, basically. There we go. Um, it, 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 that's what it mostly boiled down to because it, it's like I said before, like uh, for as much as a lot of people out there don't seem to either get it or don't want to get, is that developers actually prefer to make uh, games for only one platform instead of making multi-plats because no, that way... That... Player, it, it also depends on the architecture that they had to sure. with. Like, again, the PS3 for all intents and purposes was still... Oh yeah, it was. Orbit. Kind of like the Wii U, for example, just for different reasons. It was. It's, it's, it's mostly because, like, um, because, like, for example, like, and this is something that you can see, because um, there's a, a, a game designer on YouTube who has a YouTube channel who talks about the technical aspects of making games. And one thing that he did mention, uh, there was a video that he made specifically about people talking about how, oh, um, we should just have... PCs and not have consoles because PCs are better and he made a video about that where he talked about actually guys We actually prefer to make games for console for one console instead of a computer Why because with PCs everybody can have their own setup and their own specifications and It's near impossible for us to account for every everyone's possible rig that they have whereas with a console uh, let's let's say the switch for example, right? It's very easy for Nintendo st developers to make a game for the switch because every single switch owner is going to have the exact same set of hardware so it's very easy to make sure everybody has the exact same experience with a pc not so much so okay yeah. we need a cutscene for that yes can i have a time please uh go to 12 30 or something don't worry there's nothing going on all right uh yep all right we're almost there Okay, moving on. Oh! Fuck again, Rob. You just had to say it, didn't you, Dwips? Anyway, uh. Wow, Okay, hold on, you right. Um, and. Click. Go ahead, Dwips. Wow, I can't believe I predicted something from a game that's 15 years old. Yes, very good, Dwips. Right. You hadn't seen it yet, so. You don't really not not properly, anyway. I've, I've well, he, a lot of, um, he has a lot of reviews and shit like that, so he does have. He, he knows the basic plot still. So, um, I'll, I'll argue him predicting the whole. Oh, if the Reapers don't get points, to get a race thing is better because he hasn't actually seen anything from Twelve before, have you, Dibs? Bad. There's also you know a sort of a art in making a dialogue flow in terms of what kind of phrases you need. Sure. This is why, you know, each of us manages to guess correctly where a phrase will go occasionally. Yeah. Okay. Alright, should be simple. Simple. There's just a bit of chaos going around, but sure, I guess we'll manage. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, that's anything new to the job at this point. Alright, so that's where Naomi is. If anything, okay. ironically, the focus is not as much as us and as it is in previous ventures. Mm hmm Oh, uh, sorry, nothing to see here. Nothing again. to see here. Just a sneak. That's, a, that, that's the thing about the soldiers in this game. The soldiers in this game are, as you can see, occupied because of the war, so uh, it's relatively easy to sneak by unnoticed. Uh, obviously, because they're, they're, kind of, they're kind of got their hands full at the moment. So mm. it helps that you're not their de facto enemy either. Like, for a sure. target, yeah. Yeah. Like sure, if you show up, they might get startled, but there's sometimes where they'll choose to prioritize the enemy over you too. Mm -hmm. I wonder what kind of drug cartel owned this place before they came in Warzone. One of the drug cartels from Breaking Bad, no doubt. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's probably again that Pablo Escobar had such a huge empire on the matter in all of Central and South America. So who knows? Maybe it was his. Uh... Oh God! Imagine Pablo Escobar dealing to get a Metal Gear in his operation. Sure, it, it gives a new entire meaning to his plata o plomo catchphrase. 
Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds like some Red Dead Redemption music here. I, oh yeah, uh, I love the soundtrack in this game in particular, especially, like, let, let me put it this way. Any track with that has a good acoustic guitar in this game is gold. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, um, Harry, Harry Gregson Williams' use of the acoustic guitar in this uh, game is actually really excellent. So, like, you see it a lot in the emotional uh, tracks. Um, and also, I really like the battle music, yes. Like, um, so, this is actually my favorite of the Metal Gear soundtracks. Because uh, I absolutely like there's like when the tracks go hard, they really go, and it's so cool. I can just knock them out. They there didn't do anything wrong to us. Sleep. Let, let them sleep and have good dreams. Indeed. With all those Z's coming out of their heads. And pray to God that no enemies come about and double tap them. Unfortunately, Jova, there you go. They got shot by yeah, somebody. Yeah, but one day. He, he also had that in one of the previous parts, I noticed. Uh. <laughs> that one did, but the other one didn't. Listen, we didn't do that, okay? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It wasn't my fault. I promise. Look, look, look. We, we didn't kill him, we didn't get the XP or level of violence, we're good. Alright, almost there. Just in, ideally, it's just in front of us. Ideally, yeah, but there's this wall in front. Hmm. God damn it, the map didn't, the map didn't say anything about a wall. Hmm. You think it will give Snake a good a equipment for climbing up walls, or like, you know, um... Like grappling stuff uh, that you can use. Uh, mm. climb, uh, I don't know. I that... forgot that the MGS fight add a tool for climbing up. You know, a place like a rocky. Uh, not particularly. No. Well, the thing okay, of then. no, not really. Uh, I mean, I don't think you ever have to really interact with rock cliffs or terrain in that game. Not particularly. No. Okay then. Mostly it's like you got your canyons, your quarries and whatnot, but usually the terrains are... Oh. But usually the terrains are curved, like, you never have to, like, go straight down a cliff or anything, which makes sense, you've got horse riding in that. Yeah, again, the difficult track, the regions involved for MGS5 are uh, somewhere in Africa, in the Middle East, uh, and in South America still, I think. Uh, the first one is Afghanistan, actually. Okay. Um... You know, I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if Metal Gear Solid Five took some inspiration from Red Dead Redemption. Well, that's not really a surprise. I mean, the Red Dead Redemption was just... hugely influential for open-world games, uh, especially when it comes to the horse mechanics, so... And then Red Dead Redemption 2 kicked it up a notch to the point where Nintendo have admitted that they took heavy inspiration for that from Tears of the mm. Kingdom. Well, that's just how... They, that's just how things work. Um, oh yeah, nothing wrong with it. It's good inspiration. Oh sure. Uh, like this game, for example. This game was the first Metal Gear game to have more modern sh uh, shoulder button shooting controls instead of the um, instead of the circle um, ratchet and clank type of controls that the previous games had. Because well, when it comes to a game like this, it makes perfect sense to have, the, especially when you get to Metal Gear Solid Five. Like, with, with a game like Metal Gear Solid in particular, it would make little to no sense to go back to the original shooting controls because the new ones work so much better for that game. And even for this one, uh, this game was already designed with these controls in mind, so it worked perfectly fine. Um, I think it's a testament to just how well Free Age that even though Free doesn't have the modern typical controls, it still mm -hmm. just feels great to play. It works just fine because the game is designed with around those controls, so... You just get used to them. Um, with the remake, I'm sure they're going to implement. My get my wishes for the remake will be try to um, try to bring the gameplay up to MGS5 standards, and we're good, basically. Yeah, I'm definitely hoping for that. I mean, and you know what? I'll admit, like as if as some people may be on the idea of a Metal Gear Solid 3 remake, Metal Gear Solid 3 with the story of the original combined with the gameplay of Metal Gear Solid 5 does sound like a dream come true. I'm not gonna lie. Oh sure. Like, cause, uh, like, uh, you can, like, I, I'm, I'm not even kidding you, like, uh, after spending, like, 300 hours in MGS5, going back to these older MGS games, uh, it's still great, because, I, you know, having grown up with this series, of course, I'm used to them, or, so it's not, like, a problem, but, yeah, it does, it's unavoidable to miss the way Snake controls in 5, because it's so superior. <laughs> I'd oh, yeah, say it's both, I'd say it's, sorry. No, no, go I, 
I'd say it's both a gift and a curse of the Metal Gear Solid series, where pretty much each installment improves on the gameplay so much that the only reason you go back to a previous game is for the story. Which, you know, to be fair, you think that's how it should be. But, like, the improvements are just so drastic that it almost can feel alien going back to a previous game with how great the present one handled compared to its past. Mm-hmm. Yes, too. Oh uh, no, I was just noting what I, what has happened now. The only way to get out, you know, inside the building was to get through the sea, through the cellar, the one with the boat. Exactly. The, the wine bar. So, Snake, would you say crime is the way I fly to you? We didn't really fly for the night, for the time being. But he was climbing, and you know what that means. Well, the, the ladder wasn't that big for long. Oh, we also got uh, home. we also got yet another look we also got a yet another look at Snake's sculptuous ass, of course. Boom. If also was the jump scare thing. Well, it's still a tense moment, admittedly. Oh my god, they turned Metal Gear Solid into a first-person shooter. No, it's just an alternate uh, first-person <laughs> view you can activate during this cutscene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, actually, Dwebs, um, in Metal Gear Solid Integral, you can choose to either play MGS1, and you're going to be, be able to do that in the Master Collection. You can play MGS1 both as as intended or in first, fully in first person if you want. Same thing in the Twin Snakes remake. Problem is, the game wasn't designed with that in mind, so it's kind of an issue. <laughs> I love it how she didn't notice him. <laughs> well, she's... I'm busy. I'm on the phone. Leave me alone. I'm busy. Me too. Until then. What? Oh, and she also is taking nano machines. <laughs> I heard of Happy Pants, but this is ridiculous. I'm sure this is. I'm sure that's not foreshadowing for anything. Don't worry about it. Absolutely. Snake. Yeah, I've been here for a while, you know. I knew you'd come. She's once again played by Jennifer Hale. Ten years. Oh God, I am old. Ugh. Yes, it's been ten years. Uh, it's been ten. Remember, I played this in 2008 after playing MGS One in 1998. So yeah, I I literally. Oh my God, it's been ten years. It really has. Jesus, where did my time go? Yep. I thought he was here. He's not at the moment. He's not here. Dot dot dot. Now. Where are all the guards? They know I won't escape. I'm powerless to resist. I have no choice but to cooperate. That might just be a convenient way of saying that this is all a trap. Notice the blue roses, by the way. That's a furrow line. Yeah, what exactly happened at the end of Act 1, uh, Naomi? Maybe you can explain that to us. Hmm. Uh, well, let's see. 
you did inject me with a virus that is set to kill me at any moment in my life, so yeah, I have a little trouble trusting you. You're old anyway. Trust me, you haven't helped it. SOP had another function. To control people's senses. So basically, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> soldiers' bodies adapt to different conditions, promoting the release of neurotransmitters, hormones, and stimulants, giving them an edge in battle. They can create an artificial combat high by releasing endorphins at the same time a soldier kills an enemy. Or they can suppress hormones to Essentially, you know what the plot of Hades was supposed to be with an actor? It's like that, but actually written, you know, in a good way. Mm-hmm. Now, it doesn't necessarily warp your perception of, hey, this is an enemy but or this is, is not an enemy. She just said, yeah. you know, if you, it basically says, uh, kill good, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, say someone to turn off those war sensibilities, well, that person could probably be hit with all tons of guilt or just absolute regret from so much as firing a gun, which, yeah, would drive it's, them crazy. It's basically a huge dose of withdrawal at the same time. It makes soldiers be too, well, better soldiers, but also takes away their humanity. Which will bring into account, you remember how Meryl was acting a little bit more aggressive, like, Okay, let's forget the fact that Campbell married, uh, Rose. Rose? Like, Meryl's acting a little hopped up on steroids, almost aggressive. Yep. And remember, she has nanomachines now, too. Yep, basically. And yet, out of all the people, Akiba doesn't seem to be affected by this. Yeah, Ak that's, the, that's the weird part. Why wasn't Akiba act, uh, affected by this? Could it be that he has a secret power to resist? Hey, the she said pain, fury, and sorrow. Get it? It's clever, class. Okay, okay, okay. Get, okay, given that Ocelot's the one in charge, I wouldn't be surprised if he intentionally went for those. Each threat of violence against the innocent. Every act of war they committed was etched firmly in their hearts. Yep. Even suppresses the mind, that's inhuman. Yeah. This reaction must then be suppressed with drugs. Before the user knows it, his mind is in complete shame. Don't worry, by Metal Gear Rising, we'll make it so that nanomachines aren't an affront to human nature. Gray Fox. Yeah. They twisted his body for their experience. Yeah, it all comes back to that. Mm-hmm. Also, excellent use of Yoshinkawa's art, by the way. Oh, look, all the Metal Gear games. <laughs> ah, subtle. <laughs> very, very subtle. With under construction for two titles. If I recall correctly, it uses the PlayStation 3 menu for that. Yeah. Ordinarily, our hearts are hardened through experience. Even the most grizzled veterans live with an inescapable guilt they've had to overcome bit by bit through the years. So this explains a bit of the situation. You may have noticed that while Snake was affected, he wasn't to the point of killing over like others were. That is because he actually has legit experience to back him up. Keep in mind, a lot of these soldiers don't have proper war experience yeah. before they get the nanomachines. So you can imagine just how much crippling guilt they have when that's turned off. They're literally using nanomachines to turn regular people into soldiers. Um, uh, uh, that, that shouldn't you take me out to dinner first? Oh, please. I'm a doctor. You're a doctor dressed like that. I've seen doctors more conservatively dressed in pornos. All right, Snake. 
uh, say, why are you trusting <laughs> Naomi? You're supposed to consider that she <laughs> got you into this mess in the first place. She really did. It's just a simple proctology exam. Jesus. <laughs> well, is now really the time or place, though? She's like the, the birds are way. singing. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> All right. I feel like the birds are peeping in on this. All right, time for your checkup. One thing that I, one thing that I also really like about this scene in particular is that now Naomi has to be f literally physically confronted with the consequences of her ads in MGS One. Yep. Remember, a lot of this is thanks to her doing. Yep. Get this over with. Yes. Of course. I'm sorry. Again, you're I don't... not surprised why Snake doesn't trust you. No, it's not so much that she's surprised, it's more so that visually seeing it is a whole different matter, I will argue. Like, yeah, she knew that she, she knew that Snake would be like this, but actually seeing it right here up close, like, the reality really settles in for for Big, basically. I was referring to the dialogue from earlier, not oh, okay. a visual reaction. Sure, sure, sure. I also noticed the detail, in case you couldn't tell, she really, um, at, while she was saying sorry, she, uh, t uh, she shed a tear. So, the single second just tier. like at the end of Metal Gear Solid One. Around thirty percent still remain inside your body, attached to your cells, not finished. The first generation were never ID registered, so they don't react in the same way as the SOP nano machines. So yeah, since Snake has older nano machines, they don't work within the SOP system. It is uh, an upgrade of the system, shall we say? No. Your telomeres were intentionally... No, no, that's all wasn't my fault, I, I swear. Yeah, so... She claims the aging isn't her fault, that's apparently part of the whole cloning thing. Even though, again, we've seen... I like, Liquid wasn't aging, though. And he's older than... Well, okay, granted, they are... You can twins, argue maybe but... Solidus might have been a good example, but... Uh... Yeah, remember, Solidus, um, was old. Very more similar to Big Boss. Yeah. Yeah. They shortened your lifespan and removed your ability to reproduce. So yeah, poor Snake is also <laughs> sterile. Yeah, he's also unable to reproduce, which means he has no genes or memes to pass on to the next generation. So rapidly isn't because of disease, faulty research, or fox die. It's how you were born. It's your natural lifespan. I do feel like that's a bit of a faulty thing for the government to want to do, but yeah, it's not no, the but... do, I, do, I do you really need me to answer that? Yeah. No, no you don't. government, <laughs> Newsflash, the government does faulty things. And he's not very good at his job to boot. <laughs> it's almost like it's the reason nothing works. Yeah. <laughs> all right then okay. all right everybody in the next part uh, all right so we're going to leave naomi to examine snake hopefully and we're we'll, we'll, all right everybody to the waiting room we're gonna, we're gonna have to wait until dr naomi finishes examining snake hopefully yeah. hope in about 24 hours why she wanted that specific amount of time i don't know but it involved a saxophone hmm all right see you for the next part everybody yeah see ya see ya